You've probably seen clips of AI in Minecraft online, or perhaps tried it yourself. Essentially, a large language model is fed a screenshot of Minecraft gameplay, and when you turn and move around, it guesses what should be there. If you turn left and then right, you'll see something completely different on your screen, because it only remembers what you can currently see. This is fun to play around with, but it's currently too laggy to be a real game. LOMs simply aren't powerful enough right now to handle a high FPS. So I started to think, what if you can rebuild AI Minecraft without using AI at all? To start, I needed to draw some blocks on the screen. Drawing 3D blocks requires a lot of setup, so I decided to restrict it to two dimensions. The key part of this game is that anything you can see on the screen will persist, but anything you can't see will be discarded. To accomplish this, I created a vector of pixel groups, and each pixel group contains a call button of pixels. When I move right, all the pixel groups get shifted to the left, and the ones on the far left get deleted. When you move back left, you can see a new column has been generated that wasn't there before. Now, instead of generating random colors, we need to generate terrain that resembles Minecraft. The terrain in Minecraft has three main components. The top block, the middle block, and all of the stone below. In my setup, the screen is drawn from the top left to the bottom right. So first, I'm going to generate a random number, which would be the number of sky blocks before the top grass block is drawn on the top left. Then I will generate another random number to determine how many metal blocks of dirt there are. And finally, I will set the remaining blocks to stone. When it generates the next column, I don't want it to have a completely random height or else the terrain will be very jagged. Instead, I want to take the terrain height from the previous column and then add one, negative one, or keep it the same. It will then repeat this process for every column on screen. When I move left or right, it will take the adjacent column that is on screen to determine the terrain height. Now we have the core concept finished. The goal now is to make this more interesting and more like Minecraft. The next step to accomplish this is to add a few more biomes. These other biomes can have variations in height and the top and middle blocks can be different. However, we need to be smart about when we generate these new biomes. We can't pick a random biome every time we load new terrain because then it would be too random. Instead, I'm going to give it a 1 in 40 chance of generating a new biome. Otherwise, it will generate terrain for the current biome. So when I move around, it keeps generating the current biome for a bit before generating a new one. Now, this wouldn't be Minecraft without the player. So I'm going to have it draw a player character at the center of the screen. We want to make sure we can't jump more than one block up, so I wrote some code to restrict the movement. If we hit a wall that's at least too high, they won't be able to move forward. Right now the only way to get past it is to go back the way we came and generate some new terrain. But it would be better if we could interact with the terrain instead, so let's add mining. In Minecraft, the player could destroy blocks if they are within reach, so I wrote a function which translates that mouse position into block coordinates. When I click, it checks that the block is close to the player, and if it is, the block gets destroyed. Now I can get past two block jumps by mining away the top one. Now, people don't mine on Minecraft to collect dirt, so let's add some fancy ores for us to find. I've modified the world generation code to randomly place ores where there is stone. I've also put restrictions on the height for certain ores so you won't find diamonds on the surface.
Next, we need the ability to place blocks. I've copied over the mining code and set it to place blocks instead of remove it. In AI Minecraft, you can see a hotbar with inventory items, but this is just an illusion. The LLM doesn't actually understand what an inventory is, so we can't have one here either. Instead, I'm going to have it set the placing block to the one that is under the player. I think this adds to the hallucination effect that AI Minecraft brings. Now let's get into the coolest part, caves and lighting. I want caves to spawn at the start, but also extend when we generate new terrain. This is going to work a similar way to the biome system. When we generate a new column, we check if a cave exists next to each pixel on the left, right, top, and bottom. When we generate a new column, we check if a cave exists next to each pixel. If it does, then there is a higher chance of a cave generating there. Otherwise, there is a low chance of a cave generating. This way, networks of caves can generate instead of random air pockets appearing everywhere. I also thought it'd be more appealing if we had some lighting, so I implemented a very basic lighting system. When we add or remove blocks, a loop starts from that position and works its way down. If the space is underground, but there is sky above it, then it sets it to a light gray. However, if there is a solid block in between, then it sets all of the blocks below to a dark gray. Now with everything complete, here is the final product. Here we have our own AI Minecraft, which doesn't actually use AI at all. It has a much higher FPS, and it doesn't require an internet connection. If you enjoyed this coding adventure, please subscribe to see more video game products on this channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.